So today I'm going to be giving some hints about Project 3. This is only applicable to uh, Section 3 of 537, so the section that meets at EPIC. Um, if you're Section 1, you should stop watching this because you have a different project this time around. So for P3, don't use the links over here on the right because, um, say like this one here, these links are only applicable to Section 1. Uh, if you're in Section 3, what you really want is this link over here in the new section. So I'll click this. So a lot of, a lot of things are on here. So again, use the help list as needed. Uh, the project is due on Pi Day at 11 p.m. Uh, so we're going a little light this time because uh, because you have an exam shortly after this due date, so you only have one piece this time. Um, also, um, in, in kind of a, on a similar note, you're allowed to have a single partner for this project, so you can have teams of up to two. Um, and of course, otherwise copying code online or from other people who are not your partner is is considered cheating. If you have questions about what is appropriate, you can always ask me. Uh, so we have the hand and directories created for you. Um, one thing that's slightly different is that you have to uh, create a make file this time to build your code. We aren't going to expect that it's in just a particular file. And the other thing we need to know this time that's a little different is we need to know who your partner is. So both you and your partner should hand in this file called partner.login, and that should contain nothing except the, your partner's CSL login. Okay, so don't put any other comments there, just their login. And then after that, only one of you needs to turn in the code. Um, once we identify which teams are partners, um, or which people are on a team, uh, we'll just run one of their hand-ins, whoever appears to have code hand, handed in. Okay, so your project this week uh, it pertains to memory management, and in particular how to do malloc and free. So a typical malloc implementation will take memory from the operating system in uh, consecutive pages, and then it'll break it into small pieces that it can hand to a process that calls malloc and free. So it might ask the operating system for more memory in a variety of ways. It might use uh, SBRK. Uh, the, the boundary of the heap used to be called a breakpoint, so you could imagine by setting the breakpoint, you could request more memory from the operating system that then you can dish out in smaller pieces. The call we're going to be using for this project is called MMAP, and we'll be looking at it in more detail. Um, and so, in, in general, you'll occasionally call into the operating system to get more memory, and then when you need more, but in general, you'll reuse what you have if it's been freed and just hand it out in small pieces. So in this project, we're going to do something a little simpler. You, we're just going to allocate memory, grab memory from the operating system once when a process starts running, and then we'll never do it again. So there's a lot of overview here. But basically, what you have to do is you have to implement this interface that's defined in mem.h. And that involves four functions that are, are listed here. So let me, let me copy that interface and head over to a terminal. So Great, so I have that. So let's take a look. So you just have these four functions here. So what meminit is going to do is it's going to grab this big slab of memory from the operating system using mmap. Uh, the size of that region will be defined here in terms of bytes. And then you're going to remember where that is using a static variable. And then you're also going to re return it to whoever called, um, whoever called meminit. And we're going to use that uh, in our test to basically make sure that you aren't using any variables besides that one static variable that points to your big slab. Okay, so you can't use malloc yourself. That'd be silly, you're implementing malloc. Um, you can't put things on, on the stack, for instance, because you won't have any stack space unless these are called, and you only get that one, um, that one static variable. Okay, so you're gonna have to, when you have that slab, the trick is to figure out how to do all your bookkeeping and put all your data structures in that slab and then also use pieces of that slab to return uh, space for whoever is calling malloc. Okay, so that's meminit. Uh, the other functions are, are malloc, uh, which we call memalloc here. So you'll have to create a, a small piece of memory of specified size. And then free, free will take one of these addresses, addresses that is returned uh, by malloc. Uh, mem dump, we don't really specify what you need to do there. That's basically for your own debugging you should print off all the regions that are allocated 
or free um, just to help yourself. Okay, so let's grab these and start turning it into some code. Okay, so I have these guys here. And I'm just going to return null for now from all of these. And I don't really have to do anything here. Okay, I also have to import some stuff. I have to get um, standard lib. And also I have to import that interface that we'll be using. Okay, so let me just print something off here and then we'll take a look at how we're going to build this. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to do something a little different. What you've always done before is, is you write this program that might have a lot of C files, but it only has a single main function. So you compile all these together to a single binary, and then you enter that binary at that main. Okay, in this case, we're, we want to build a library that a lot of different um, binaries that other people write could end up using. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a shared object, and then what you could do is you could install a single shared object on somebody's system, and then all the different programs running on that system could take advantage of that shared library. So we, we save space, um, and then also the, one of the reasons people might do that is if all the different binaries are using the same shared library, uh, as somebody patches that shared library, say with security updates, then everybody else's program can take advantage of that, even if they don't re recompile their own programs. Okay, so what we're doing is uh, we're doing some sort of dynamic linking where uh, we can modify our shared object or this library independently of other binaries, and they don't have to recompile things. If I'm doing static linking uh, of my library, that would mean that everybody has to recompile whenever I change my library. Okay, so we're going to do some dynamic linking uh, so we can save space and other people don't have to recompile. So let me head over to a shell here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we first want to uh, just produce a mem.o from this mem.c. And so this is going to be a little different than normal, but I'm going to say dash c to show I'm producing this intermediate file. I'm compiling mem.c, and I'll have, have these guys as well. And I'm going to just say reproduce mem. And also I have that printf there, so that's a little unhappy. I need my standard I.O. Okay, so that's how we would normally compile it. We're going to do something a little bit different. So when we have this shared library and different people use it by their program, it's going to have to get loaded to different virtual addresses at different times. Why? Well, uh, we can't really coordinate with everybody else who is running a shared library, so it's not like we can have a single designated virtual address where our shared object always gets mapped into a process's virtual address space. So because of that, we have to use a flag with GCC called uh, the flag and then position independent code. And what this is going to do is it's going to generate code that will work regardless of where the code gets loaded into memory. And in that way, a lot of people, different people can use that. So I'm going to do that. And actually, I actually wanted a mem.o file here. I'm just going to get this like this so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so I, the main important part that I'm changing is I have position independent code as so. And now I have my, my O file. And so now what I want to do is I want to produce a shared object, a .so, from this mem.o file. So to do that, uh, I'm going to do a GCC again. And I'm going to say I want to build something that's shared. And the output is going to be libmem.so. So all of these SO files have to begin with lib. That's just a convention um, that GCC assumes. And then my input is mem.o. Okay, and I see that, sure enough, I have my libmem.so that is now built. Okay, so now we need to figure out how to use this uh, libmem.so uh, from another program. I guess, actually, wait before we do that. Uh, one of the things you have to do is, is turn in a make file. So I'm going to walk you through how, how we can create a make file that will build this automatically for us. So the first thing we want to do 
is we need to specify the target that we're going to build, and then after that we can have uh, some dependencies, and then we can have some directions on how to actually produce uh, the target given these dependencies. Okay, so in this case, uh, as you can imagine, uh, the target that we're actually building is libmem.so, and what does that depend on? Well, whenever mem.c changes, I may want to recompile libmem.so. Okay, so I'm going to say mem.c, and how do we do that? Well, I had a number of instructions over here that I will just simply copy over here. So first I produce the .o file with the position dependent code, and then I produce the shared library. Okay, so this is, these are just instructions I ran on the, on the shell earlier. Okay, so I'm going to run uh, make over here, and it says libmem.so is up to date. Make knows that because of the timestamps on libmem.so and mem.c. So let's say I modify mem.c, and we'll add, say, an exclamation, and I save that. Now make is going to see that mem.c is newer than the .so file. When I run it again, it knows it has to update that. Okay, so that's how we have that. So now I'm going to build a test program uh, that will exercise libmem.so since there's no uh, main function inside of libmem.so. Okay, so I'm going to create something called tester.c and I have an Emacs macro here to um, start my function. Just a simple program with a main in it. So let me import mem.h because where I need that interface. And uh, I guess we can uh, let's say we just want one page for now. And I'll also assert that that's not null. But actually, I don't want to do that. I'll just leave that as is for now. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to build uh, my, my um, tester.c. So I'm going to head back to the make file. And I want to make a binary called tester, and that's going to depend on tester.c. And so this is just a little tricky. What I might normally do is I might say something, something like this here, where I don't want a position independent code anymore, but I might compile tester.c to something called tester. So I'm going to try this. Do I make? And that's going to fail. Uh, it's actually failing for a couple of reasons. Let me head back here. It wasn't the reason I was expecting. It just wants me to use that. Okay, so this is the error I was expecting. Uh, let me split this slightly differently. So it's saying undefined reference to meminet. So why is that? Well, when I'm building this, it doesn't know where that shared uh, shared library lives. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to tell uh, GCC a couple things. We have to tell it what directory to look in for uh, shared objects, and we have to tell it the name of the particular shared object we want. Okay, so which directory? We specify that with a capital L. I want the current directory dot, and then which library do we want? I'll specify that with L, and then we want mem. So when GCC sees this dash L at mem, what it's trying to do is it's trying to try to import libmem.so, which is of course the, the object that we produce. Okay, so let me try running this again. So that builds, and let me try running it. And now we see that there's yet another problem. Okay. So it's saying libmem.so cannot open shared object file, no such file or directory. So when we're using these shared object files, uh, you need to not only know where those are when you're building your code, but you need to know where they are when you're running your code. So there's this tool that can anal analyze dependencies called LDD. So I'm going to run that on tester. And this shows all the different shared object files that tester needs. And what this is saying here is it, most of them it knows where they are, but libmem.so is not found. It doesn't know where that lives, even though libmem.so is in the current directory. So 
You guys should all be familiar with path variables from your shell project. Let me take a look at my path here. Basically, whenever you try to run something uh, without specifying an absolute path or a relative path, um, your shell will iterate over all these directories until it actually um, until it finds that um, the binary you're interested in, one of them. Okay, so there's the same similar idea for uh, shared objects, but instead of path, that's called load uh, library path. So I echo that and I see that, hey, that hasn't been set at all yet. So I have to set that up, and in this case, I want it to um, I want it to refer to the current directory. So I'm going to set that and then echo it again, and, and sure enough, it's set. Okay. So let me try running this again. Tester, and I see hello from eminent dot space nil. Okay. So so far so good. I can um, compile my shared shared object and then compile some code that uses it, and, and it all runs together nicely. So let me go back, and I want to uh, show you, I guess, a couple things. So I'm going to change my uh, change my mem.c, and how do I want to do that? I'll, I'll maybe just get rid of that again. And when I run make, it says testers up to date. Um, so you might be surprised, hey, this is no longer rebuilding libmem.so when mem.c changes. The reason why is in, in your make file, Basically, it only builds this this first target. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to set something up that whenever we run it, it'll make sure that we have both of these built. How do we do that? Um, we can do something called all that uh, where we can specify the two things we want, or or perhaps more. And then if if I run say make all, it will run both of those. So if I run that again, nothing to, I'll have to do that. So in general, when I say make, I can specify one of these targets. So I could say make tester, or I could say make lib m.so. Um, now one thing that could be confusing is that it's actually expecting there to be a file that called all. So if somehow um, I, I created that, so if I created all and then just ran make, it will get confused. Uh, so one of the things that we should do, so this is slightly different, right? Because tester is being built from tester.c, libmem.so is being built from mem.c, but all is just an arbitrary label. It's not something, we aren't actually producing any file called all. So what I need to do to make sure that make is not confused, I have to say something called, I'm saying that this is a phony dependency, so I'll say dot phony colon all. Okay, and then if I to make all, uh, it should be fine. Okay, so this, now if I make any changes to either libmem.so, uh, or I'm sorry, if I make changes to either mem.c or tester.c, I should be rebuilding. So let me take a look now at mem.c. The Wi-Fi is a little laggy here. Okay, so this is good. So I'm gonna try updating this, so hello to and build, and you notice here that it recompiled my SO from mem.c, but it did not recompile tester, so I'm going to try running tester again, and I'm a little confused why it's printing off uh, hello from Eminent since I got rid of that. Oh, I see the problem. Somehow I had a typo here, and this is supposed to be producing it out OAuth file as an intermediate. So let me rebuild this. Okay, so this should be happy now. I can run tester and it says hello 2, or let's say I uh, change it to hello 3. 
what, what's cool here is if I rebuild this, you see that it's only rebuilding uh, my malloc. It's not rebuilding tester. If I rerun tester, I get um, different outputs. This is the par power of shared libraries. Um, if people roll out security patches to uh, my shared object, I don't have to recompile my binary such as tester that use it. Tester can just start using the, middle, uh, the new stuff without recompiling. Okay, so I'm set up here now where I have my test program and it's calling into, uh, into my shared library. So let's take a look up here and figure out what we actually want to do here. So the first thing we need to do in Memonet is we have to grab a big slab of space. So well, lucky for you, we have some code on, on the website that does that. So I'm just going to create a... Um, something that says create space. Oops. And then it's going to return that. Well, I guess actually, um, I'm also going to have a single static variable for all my space that I'll create up here. And so what create space will do is it's basically uh, uh, opening up this device. All this device does is it only produces zeros. And then mmap is basically mapping space from this device into our virtual address space. We're going to get a big slab of just zeros. Um, you should read the man page for mmap. It basically, it's going to take, uh, create a region of, of this size. It's going to be readable, writable. It's going to be private, so other... Um, other processes can't access, and it's going to be from that file descriptor. Okay, so we're checking for failure, and if there's failure, we'll exit. Um, so now we can assume that uh, uh, we can assume that at this point, uh, pointer is pointing to a valid um, mmap region. So I can just say space equals that, and I guess I'll just put that at the end, so I'm not adding things in the middle of this example. Okay, so this will create my space for me. And I guess I actually don't even need to return anything here since I just directly set it. So memInit is going to do a create space, and it has to do it for this given size of region. So I should add this as an argument to create space. Okay, so I'm going to print this out now. Actually, I guess I can just return it right here return space. So let me head over here and, and try to build this. And there's lots of things that it's unhappy about. Um, so one of those things is, is read write. So I know what that is. I'll just fix these one at a time. Uh, I'm not going to look this up now. I just because I happen to remember what they are. Uh, man, map. So I need to include this for my mmap. And what is it, what's it complaining about there? Create space, implicit function. Oh, it's not happy about close. So let me take a look at what, um, at the close system call. And I just need unit standard for that. Okay, so now I'm including everything I actually need. Okay, create space should set up this space variable. And this is the only global or static variable that we get. Okay, all your other bookkeeping needs to be in that slab that this is pointed to, pointing to. Okay, so let me actually try running this now. And tester. And I see, sure enough, it got some space at this location. And, and so the other thing that is going to have to happen is that uh, size of region must be a multiple of the page size. I'm not going to um, worry about that now, but in, in your actual project, you might need to round size of region off. You see that in tester.c, I happen to be using 496, which I know is a multiple on this system. So you can read more in the document about, about documentation about how to 
uh, figure out what the uh, page size is and then make sure you round up to that. Okay, so here we have that big slab of space and then the challenge is, is in the space that this is pointing to, how can we use that for all of our uh, bookkeeping for, um, use that for all of our bookkeeping for our program or for our library. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, just walk through some examples. Um, one thing I might want to do is I might want to have uh, a struct that keeps track of all, kind of like a, goal, uh, a stru struct that's shared across all my different allocations. So just kind of like a super, um, kind of a super block that describes everything. So I could call this uh, the global uh, header. And um, one of the things I could say in there is I can say, so this is going to be at the very, I'm going to place this at the very start of this space, and then I'm going to put other things after that. So I can put a couple things in there. I can have, um, say, a pointer to Alex space, and what else might I want to put in there? Uh, I'm probably going to want to put other things, say, uh, like a free list of, of things I can allocate from. Um, I might want to say how much uh, um, size there is for the alloc space. So I'll have an integer alloc space size. Okay. Anyway, I need to put this somehow in, in here because I have to store everything in here. So let me head down after I've created the space. So one, one of the things I could do is that I could uh, put this right at the beginning so I, I can have my global header and I'm going to make that point to my space. And then I can do a number of things. I can, uh, so all my allocations are going to have to be after that. Let me head back and look at these things I have to initialize. Okay, so I need to say where this starts. Where is it going to start? Well, it's going to start right after my header. So I'm going to say this uh, equals space plus the size of, of this header that I'm creating. And then I can also say how much space do I have? Well, uh, that's going to be the size of the region. Uh, that I have. So the size of the region includes both the space for my um, global shared header and all my other allocations. So I need to subtract off the size of that header. Okay. So, so far so good. Let me make sure this still compiles. Okay. So what I'm going to do for now, is I'm just going to make a very simple version of malloc that uh, the free is actually going to be broken. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, we're, once we allocate something, we'll never be able to free it. So that will be a very simple malloc. But I'm going to do that just to get people started. So what I'll do up here is I'll have something called uh, next adder. And so basically what we're going to do is as we carve up this space, I'll keep allocating um, at the end of the space. I'll just kind of move this ahead. And, and so basically it might look something like this. And there might be a number of allocations. And then there might be a lot of free space. Okay, so each of these allocations is something that would be returned from malloc. And each time um, we want to have another allocation, we're going to take off a piece of this free. So that free will get smaller, we'll just have another allocation in there. And in the simple thing I'm doing just during this demo, we're never going to free any of these allocations. You might imagine in your actual implementation, somebody might later free this, or say free this. Um, if you're really building a... a High quality implementation, you could imagine merging these into one free space, but you aren't required to do that for this project. But anyway, for this simple version where I just have a bunch of allocations followed by free space, what I may do is I'm going to have, um, after the header, I'm going to have, um, 
So it's trying to start like this. I'm going to have a, a pointer that is going to refer right here, and that's going to be what next adder is. So next adder is going to be pointing basically to uh, the start of the free space. Okay, and then uh, that will always be true, and then so I know where to, uh, to allocate from, so whenever I allocate, I can allocate here. And then of course this next um, adder, which was pointing here, will just move down and point to the free space again. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do today. So what I want to make happen is when I first uh, initialize this, I'm going to make my um, next adder point to the start of my alloc space. Okay, and then what I can do is whenever I do a malloc, I can head down here, and I'm going to basically be returning, I may want to return something like this, but of course, I may want to implement that first. So what I'm going to, or basically I'm going to want to increment it first. So basically I'll get my new adder, uh, which is going to be this, and I may be returning that. Okay. And then I also have to increment it by whatever the size was. So that the next time I return it, it'll, it'll be, um, the next time it's called, I can return the next piece of free space. So there's some other things I have to do. I need to make sure that, um, that when I do this allocation, I actually have, have room left. So one of the things I can do is I can say, uh, if this adder plus the size is greater than something, then I'm just going to return null. Okay, so what is that size? Um, or what, what do I want to compare it to? I need to figure out what my last address is. So I'm going to head up here, and I can see that uh, basically I start off at this alloc space, and if I add this alloc space size to it, I can get the end uh, of my memory. So I'm going to head back down here, uh, and so basically what I want to compare this to is alloc space from my header uh, plus this alloc space size. So this is the end of my slab I got at the beginning. And basically what I want to see is if, um, if the end of this malloc region that I'm trying to grab would extend past that big slab, then I know I can't do that. And also I have to grab this uh, header here because, of course, I don't have any uh, any static variable for that. So I'm going to actually, what I'll do is, where did I define header before? So I can do something just like this as before because the header, this global header will always be at the start of space. So I'm going to head down here and get that global header. I, I guess I can call it a G header. And G header. Okay, so I'm looking at, I'm comparing the end of where I'm thinking about allocating memory to the end of my whole slab, and if that's too big, then I'll just return null. Okay, so let me make this and see if, if I'm still working so far. Uh, 45. Great, so that's G header. And I guess really what I actually need to do um, is instead of returning this adder, which is just a copy, I need to read. Um, or I need to increment the actual next adder in my global struct. So let me make this, and let me make sure it still runs. Okay, so let me head over to tester.c, and I'll just add an assert here that space equal to null. And so what I'll do now is I'll just do a bunch of allocations, and what I'll do is I'll have um, an integer pointer, uh, we'll say x, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll just keep allocating these until I run out of space. So I'll say that while well, x equals man alloc, and how large do I want it to be? I want it to be the size of an integer, so I'll say size of an int. So I'm basically allocating that there. 
And then what I want to really do is I want to see if this is um, null or not. So I'm going to wrap this in another set of parentheses. And I want to say, well, that's not equal to null. Then I'll just keep cruising along like that. So let me print these off as we go. And of course, I need to import a cert. Okay, so we basically see that we do all these allocations here, and that each time it's increasing by four because that's how much I'm allocating. So let me just pipe these out, and you can see that we're getting a little less than 1024 because we have some space for that global header. Okay. So I want to look a little bit at how to do some bookkeeping for each of these allocations. So what, what you could imagine is that after allocating each of these, you might do a man free of x. And generally that would reclaim space. So if in your implementation, this should loop forever. Why? Because your freeing memory is fast as you're allocating it. Okay. So, of course, that won't be the case here, but I'll, I'll run it again just to take a look. Okay, so one of the features um, that you will often see in a malloc and free is that allocated regions will have a magic number associated with them, say, before the allocated space. Why is that useful? Uh, well, if somebody else has a buffer overflow and they scribble over memory and they scribble over your particular variable, they'll also probably end up scribbling over that that magic number. Uh, why is that useful? Well, then when you try to free your allocation, free can see, hey, that magic number changed, and it can make your program um, crash nicely instead of just keeping running and doing something strange. Uh, one of the implications of that is people often write their program with their code without freeze, and uh, and then they'll later add freeze at the end, and then the program will start crashing. They say, oh, the freeze must have broken it. That is the vast majority of the time not the case. Usually you have some memory error somewhere else. So to show that, I want to add some magic numbers here. You aren't required to do magic numbers for your implementation, uh, but I think it's useful to look at so that you can understand when you're using malloc uh, what's going on. So let me head back to mem.c. And what I want to do here is I'm going to uh, basically put a little header before each of these regions that I'm allocating. Okay, so let me get a little header that I can do. Um, and you'll probably want to do something similar to this, but you'll probably be putting different information in your header um, so that you can keep track of, for instance, how large these regions are. Um, so I'm going to have a used header. And what am I going to put in there? I'm just going to have a magic number. Uh, what will my magic be? Uh, I'll define that up here. So I'm just trying to say something in hex, so I'll say feed face. And then what I can do is each time I allocate, let me head back to malloc. Um, what I want to do here is uh, I, I'm, I'm grabbing off of the free space. Um, now I'm going to put both my header there and uh, my actual variable. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to create um, uh, a pointer to this header, and I'm going to call this a u header, and that's going to actually equal this this next adder. And what I want this to be now is I want it to be well, I guess what it was, but um, I want to also add on the space for. Uh, um, for that header that I just created. So let me add that in. Okay, so let me just, uh, I'm sorry if this is getting redundant, but let me show you what this is going to look like. So we had uh, used, use, and then say free. I guess I'll just put something here. So we have lots of used space. And we have lots of free afterwards. So basically what it's doing is, is it's grabbing a piece off of this and it's putting the u header 
and then it is going to uh, get the allocation here and it will turn this adder. Okay, so you can see that uh, this adder is just, um, so the U header will be at, at the edge of the free space and then the actual adder that we're going to re be returning is right after that. So that's why we're adding in this size here. Okay, and of course this still all works here um, because what we really care about is the end of this allocation. We want to make sure the end of this allocation doesn't run past uh, the end of our big slab. Okay, so what I want to do here now is that at this point I know I have space for it. So in addition to, um, I need to do a couple things differently. One is I want to initialize that U header. And what am I going to do? I'm going to set the magic equal to the magic number. Uh, so in this case, this U header is basically just going to look like the feed face. And then also I need to increment this by more. So I'm going to say the size of, I guess I can just grab this right here, that header that I'm using. Okay, so what will happen then is let's say somewhere back here before this allocation I have some buffer and the, the there's a bug and we overwrite this, we'll clobber this feed face so then this will be some, turn into some sort of garbage. Um, I don't know what garbage looks like there, but that'll that'll end up looking like some garbage. And what will happen? Oops. What will happen then is that when somebody frees this, the freeze should look back and see that hey, this is not feed face, and then we can um, crash with a polite message. Okay. So this should all be good so far. Let me um, let me actually try running it. tester. Uh, so now you can see that this is increasing by more than four because we also have have um, that header before each allocation and also we can see that that means we can't allocate nearly as many things. Um, but why is that useful? Well let's actually check that in free. So I'm not going to actually make free free up any space. I'm just trying to make it check that we haven't had a corruption. Okay so let me head back to mem.c and maybe I'll grab this. So when we're freeing, freeing something, basically what we want to do is we want to, we know, we know this pointer, so we know have um, uh, this pointer is referring to this allocation. <coughs> so what we can do is we can subtract from that pointer to get the U header, right? Because this is, the U header contains this. So let me go back and look at that U header. And I'm going to do something slightly different. So I have my pointer, and I'm going to subtract off the size of one of these structs. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, if you header magic is not equal to feed base, which we defined as magic. Uh, I guess I can just print a, a friendly message here and exit. Uh, okay, and then of course what you would actually do in your project is that you would uh, actually free that space. Okay, so let me try running this. And of course, nothing has changed, so we aren't detecting any errors at this point. So let's introduce a bug. So, what I'm going to do here is say that, let's say instead of integers, we're using 64. Okay, so I'm trying to allocate space for um, these 64-bit integers, but of course down here it's only allocating spa um, malloking space for 32-bit integers. Uh, let's
I'm just trying to do a simple example where I just have two of these guys. Let me, okay, let me go back here. I'm going to change, uh, get rid of this loop and do something slightly differently. Mm. So I'm going to malloc two things back to back, two integers. And then at the end, what I want to do is I want to mem free both of these. Okay, so how am I going to use these? Well, what I'm going to do is. Uh, Let's say that I ended up not allocating enough space here um, because I actually want to use a 64. Well, actually, let's, let's first do the thing that works. So I'll do this like so. So I'm going to uh, free both of these. And right now, there shouldn't be a bug, so it should both work. So I'm actually also say, x equals 1, 2, 3. And I'll say y equals 4, 5, 6. OK, so let's head over here. make tester and it doesn't print anything out because of course my program um, actually works. Okay, so now let me, instead of um, doing this, I want to make this uh, a 64-bit integer. So now this uh, this um, this 4-byte value that I'm allocating will not be enough to hold this 8-byte uh, value. So when I do this, this I'll be actually be clobbering the space after that allocation. In particular, it'll be clobbering the bookkeeping for this guy. So when I try to free it, that's going to get messed up. Okay, so let me try to run this. And I run it, and sure enough, a free uh, detected a corruption. Okay, so basically, and that's this free right here. I guess I don't even really need this one just to show you exactly where the problem is happening. So when I run that, a free detected a corruption. So note here that this is not my bug. Um, what the problem is, is that this overwrote bookkeeping for y. Okay, so why, why, this is one of the big uh, values of doing this project, is that when you understand how malloc works internally, then when you're actually using malloc yourself and you get some strange memory bugs, you'll have a much better shot at debugging your seg faults or other strange corruptions, because you'll know that, hey, I probably just overwrote some bookkeeping by having some bug that is really like this. And you won't do the kind of beginner mistake of just removing all your freeze to avoid your problem, right? Like, if I did this, I'm not solving my problem. But of course, it does not complain then. Okay, so that's all I have. So good luck.